we all love trees. Those elders of our natural areas and most precious of all species. But urban environments can be tough on trees. Conditions can limit their lifetime and they're commonly removed. But what happens when a tree falls in the city? Does anyone hear it? Well, Millie's discovered that some go on to make beautiful music. There are only a few things I love almost as much as gardening, but two of them are music and timber. And today, those worlds are colliding. Lead the way. Lead the way. Yeah. Guitars everywhere. There are. I'm visiting a factory in Melbourne where salvaged timber is transformed into high-end guitars that are destined for the world stage. Everywhere from Estonia to Japan to the UK, uh, we've got about 35 countries that it ends up. Miles Jackson has worked with musical instruments for decades and is the CEO of Cole Clark Guitars. The classic tone woods that we know of um, are timbers that were close to the people who use them. So Stradivarius used maple and spruce from the mountains in Italy. Martin used spruce from the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York. But we've just used timbers that are close to us. Urban recovery is our favourite. It's, it's the ultimate in sustainability. A street tree in a garden, in botanical gardens, it's dead, it's dying, it's got to come down. Uh, let's use that tree for something good. That's what urban recovery is. We have arborists that are on the lookout for us for certain trees. We use the Sequoia dendrum giganteum, which is the big tree redwood. So these are ornamental trees that were planted one off back in the 1850s. And those trees in Australia seem to turn up their heels at about 150 years old, give or take. They're wonderful trees. So this is actually making something that we think's, you know, nice and, you know, if, if someone might keep forever. And it's also carbon sequestration, so it's keeping the carbon in the timber, whereas when you chip it, it goes. So, so it's actually great for the environment in many ways. Once the timber gets dropped here at the factory, it gets stacked. Unless the wood is dried properly, it can warp and change its shape over time. So it's important to get the moisture content exactly right. Yeah, this is interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, it's really warm in here. Really? It's about 40 degrees. Just dry it right out down to about 6%, 4%. How long is it in here for? Three, four days, can be longer. Depends on the timber and what we're trying to do with that particular. And the whole environment is kind of climate controlled for stable timber. That's right. So the, the whole factory is 42 to 48% humidity. Wow. All the time. The process of making a guitar takes about a year. Over this time, the guitar is handled for a total of about 20 hours. G'day, Nick. Hey. How are you going? Hey, I'm good, yeah. You've got the job of turning a straight tree into a curved guitar. Basically, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how it goes here, yeah. And tell me how you do it. So there's hot water in there. We soak it in there for a couple of minutes, yep. depending on the timber okay. um, and what it needs. And then, um, bring it over, chuck it in these. These get up to about 150 degrees and we leave them in for five minutes and they they come out all best to shape. So they're like baked into the shape of a guitar? Yeah, yeah. This one is blackwood, yep. uh, despite its colour. It's an interesting timber in that it's called blackwood, but it seems to come in every colour. Yeah, it comes in every colour, but not really black. <laughs> sides of the guitar to the face and add the plates in here for where we end up cutting out the preamp hole and oh. the jack hole. Must be really satisfying to see this amazing finished product. It's incredible, you know. I never would have expected that this is where I would be. Um, and now I'm building guitars that quite often could end up on a stage with someone famous playing it. So at a at a small glance, you think, oh, I'm just building guitars. But if you look at the bigger picture, this is part of someone's career. This is where it starts. 
it goes to the final assembly area, they do the binding, the inlays, and then it comes down to paint. We're really lucky in Paint Shop because we get to see the timber really come to life. So it goes from the dry timber to, you know, nice and hydrated and full of paint, so it's, it's pretty true. exciting. It's a gorgeous moment where you see that real character. Yeah, definitely. So I really want to touch them, but I'm not going to. Yeah, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have a favourite amongst them? Like, do you play yourself? Yeah, I do play a bit. Um, I really like the Thin Line range with the Humbucker. Um, I find they're pretty beautiful guitar and they sound great too. The setup room does the strings, puts strings on, puts the electronics in, puts the machine heads on, turns into the final guitar, and then of course it gets tested, which is someone's got to play it. So someone does get, they, they get paid to sit down and play guitar. Lloyd Spiegel has been helping to research and develop these guitars since the company began. I think the official term is uh, research and development advisor, but um, company guinea pig is probably more likely. And what have we got here? All black wood. Um, stiff top on it. So acoustically, very quiet, because when you're strumming a guitar, you're hearing the movement of the top. Uh, so a redwood or a cedar would be would be bigger acoustically. However, when you plug in, which is what I do 100% of my shows, uh, you get a stiffer top, less movement, which means more control over the plugged in sound. And so how do you test them? So for me, it's just about playing what I, what I would play at home, making sure that it, it, it sounds right. You can get uh, 10 different guitars made from the same tree and they'll all sound completely different. So I want to play really soft, and I want to strum it really, really hard. Make sure it stands up to the test. I love handing them to people and having them hear themselves in a different colour for the first time. Speaking of handing them to them, can I have a rip? I've been waiting for you, all day for you to ask me that. Well, can I just help myself to a guitar here? Absolutely. That one on the end is, is almost custom made for you. <laughs> Do you know where this tree came from? It came from uh, Dalesford, actually, oh. here in Victoria, and uh, it was going to become firewood. It was a dead tree, and now it's very lucky. It's famous. It's going to get played by you on telly. Very badly. <laughs> All right, what should I do? I think uh, a bit of an E blues would be great. At your discretion. I love trees, I love timber, and I love music. And I hate to think of old beautiful trees being reduced to mulch. But here they're being honoured and turned into something almost magical. We often think the trees are silent, but when placed in the right hands, they can sing. Good. <laughs> <laughs>